Hey everyone, Stedman from Action Figure Overload doing a review of DC Comics Multiverse Batman The Dark Knight Returns Mutant Leader figure. He is of course the leader of the mutant gang in Frank Miller's The Dark Knight Returns graphic novel. So starting at the top we have the DC Comics logo uh, going down the DC Comics Multiverse banner. We see the window with the figure and all the accessories and the collect and connect piece for New 52 Doomsday. In the lower left we see an image of the mutant leader from the graphic novel. To the right of that we see the figure name. On the side of the box we can see another picture of the mutant leader with a little description and bio at the bottom. And on the back of the box we can see all the other figures in the wave and the pieces they come with to build the new 52 Doomsday. Finally on the last side we have the DC Comics multiverse and the DC Comics logo at the bottom. let's go ahead and open them up and here we have the mutant leader out of the box and first impressions I think he looks pretty awesome the colors that they used came out really good the orange around the waist the ankles and the wrist and even for the glasses along with the black pants uh, are very true to the graphic novel he's bulky muscular just the way the mutant leader should be so let's take a look at his accessories and then we'll get a closer look at the mutant leader himself here are the accessories that the mutant leader comes with. He has his torch that he held when he was rallying the mutant troops, uh, or his truncheon as he called it. I really like the mold that they used for the flame. It came out really cool. The way that the flames are like going upward into that single tip right there. I really like the flames here, how the yellow blends into like the light orange and then into the red. There is a little bit of paint bleeding here on the gray. Uh, you could barely see it but we see some yellow like right there at the tip there and then we see some red bleeding in like right here uh, we also see some chips in the paint where there's a chip there there's a yellow chip there they're just multiple chips in the flames so it's not too big of a problem uh, it kind of goes into the effect of the flame i'm really enjoying the design for the handle of the torch it looks like an old beat up torch that was just ripped off the wall of the castle it's very barbaric and viking like I also really like the material that they use for the handle. The dark gray with the silver. They could have just made it a stick with flames, but instead they went and put in all this extra detail. The little bends and the folds that they have on here. The knob on the side, uh, the extra little knob on the tip. I think it came out really cool. And of course he comes with the crowbar. Uh, it's a crowbar that he found in the dump heap and he just used it to pummel the crap out of Batman. It's just a standard crowbar, but I do like the mold that they used. I like how they uh, they added in like the different effects for the tips here, um, this little indentation in the back for the hook, and then going down we can see that the bottom of it also has the little teeth that a crowbar normally has. It's made of the same material that the torch handle was made out of, where it's the dark gray but has the glinting of silver all throughout, and so it gives it that old beat up look, and I, I think it came out really awesome. There are definitely a bunch of cool features regarding this figure, but nothing is better than the head sculpt. I really love the way that it came out. We see that he has this crazy angry look going on with his face. I just love the expression that he has on his face right here. I like that the detail that they got on the teeth and the inside the mouth. Uh, the teeth are very jagged and sharp like they're supposed to be. Um, like he filed them down so that way he can chomp through people uh, like he does with Batman. The shades came out really cool. The orange with the red in the center for the lens. I think they came out pretty awesome. And uh, the flesh tone, the flesh tone in the face came out really nice as well. We got some nice detailing happening in the ear. The furrowed brow happening with the wrinkles up here on his forehead. The orange and the spikes on the top of the head came out really cool too. There's the back of his head. Not much happening with the back, but we do see the spikes. For the rest of the figure, we have the chest and arms. And of course, he's the mutant leader, and he's the biggest, baddest, buffest one of them all. So uh, I really like how they made the muscles come out. They gave him a lot of definition and tone with the abs and the chest and everything. He has awesome shoulders and biceps to take on Batman and the rest of the city. On his wrist, I like that the spikes are here. And uh, they made it so that they're flesh-toned. 
uh, and the orange spikes so that way it's like they're coming right out of his wrist they do rotate and I don't know why but we'll get into that more in articulation for the hands we can see his nails are painted black uh, and they don't look as sharp as I was expecting them to be. Well, I guess the thumbnail does. Uh, but for the rest of the nails, they're curled in so you can't really see them too well. But I guess they look sharp enough that he's supposed to have claw nails. Not sure why they neglected to give him nipples. I mean, he looks fine without them. Uh, they're, not a, they're not that big of a deal. I know that that was a big part of his look in the graphic novel. Uh, where he would have the spikes where his nipples should be but I mean he looks fine without them again I really like the flesh tone that they use for this figure it looks like they added a little bit of an orange wash to him to give him that tanned kind of look that bronzed body uh, I think it looks really cool it came out really nice here he is at the back and we see all the definition in his back and the sculpt looks really good here all the muscles that we can see really pops out Moving down, we have this belt. It's a cool orange belt. It's like a solid piece along with the waist, so it moves along with the waist. I really like how the spikes are silver and uh, how they contrast against the orange. It makes them really pop out and stand out. I also like how the spikes, I feel like they're supposed to be all straight and like sticking out at the, like straight out, but some of them are popping up and kind of curling up so we can see that this spike is coming straight out at us while these spikes are kind of tilted up it doesn't bother me at all i think it gives it that nice like worn look i really think it makes the figure come to life moving down we have solid black pants so not too much happening with paint detail here they're like a matte black color for the pants but there are definitely a lot of lines and wrinkles happening with the pants so that's cool it adds in a lot of detail makes it look lifelike I do like how they changed up the material for the hip joint. It's more of a flexible, flimsy-ish plastic, so that way uh, we get articulation uh, for the legs. And we can get more into that when we talk about the full articulation of the figure. Uh, moving down, again we have the orange band around the ankles and then the silver spikes coming out all around. And these, these are straight out for all of them, so it's not like the belt where some of them are like tilted up or pointed up which again makes me think that all of them should be sticking out the same way. Um, here's the other foot and uh, I think it looks really cool. I really like how the black and orange contrast against each other. It kind of gives it that Halloween look and uh, they're just, they just go really well together along with the orange wash over the body of the figure. It doesn't make him look weird or anything. It just kind of like flows together. And uh, looking down at his feet, there are a lot of good details on the feet we have the very sharp toenails happening here. We see the foot veins. That looks really nice. We have some details happening here on the side of the foot and on the back. And uh, even on the bottom, we see what, what's going on with the feet. So we have the individual sections of the toes. Uh, we have some foot wrinkles down here. Same thing with the other foot. And uh, we can see that there are peg holes here, so that's always nice. And the same kind of detail on this foot. We have the veins, we have the individual toes uh, segmented there. We have details on the side and on the back. For his articulation, his head moves to the right and to the left. He can look up just a little bit and look down a little bit more. Uh, so his neck articulation isn't that great as far as moving up and down. His arms move up and out he does have rotation at his bicep uh, his elbows bend about that much and his wrists have rotation the spikes on his wrist move as well uh, they move in addition with the wrist or they could just move on their own so you can adjust those if you need to his ab crunch is pretty nice if this is him standing straight uh, he can bend forward about that much and back to standing straight and he can move back quite a lot too so forward and back uh, which adds into his very limited neck rotation so it, um, our neck articulation so he can get up pretty pretty nice uh, with that with that ab crunch and the same thing with looking down he has rotation at his waist uh, his waist belt moves along with his waist. Uh, you can't move the waist freely like you can with the wrist. So uh, the waist spikes are where, where they are. His 
legs move out about that much and they move forward that much. So we can definitely see that this is a different version of Mattel's uh, crotch piece. It's not like the normal ones like we saw for some of the other Mattel waves. And I really like it. It's a soft uh, plastic so that way it doesn't hinder the legs. So the legs move the plastic in place. And I think that that's really cool. His knees bend down about that much. Uh, and that's both knees. They don't bend very much at all. So that's like the most limiting part of his articulation. I really wish that he could bend his knees more. Uh, not having that 90 degree bend is definitely going to limit the amount of poses that we could put him in. He doesn't have any thigh rotation or any calf rotation. Uh, his spikes do move freely much like the ones on the wrist uh, but there's no ankle rotation. His ankles do move down and they do move up just a bit as well. And he does have peg holes at the bottom of his feet. The mutant leader stands in at just over six and a half inches. And here he is next to the Dark Knight Returns Batman. I really like how the mutant leader figure came out. The details that they added in the sculpt are great. It's really cool how the paint apps of the black and the orange are comic accurate. And he came with some pretty cool accessories as well. The only downside to this figure is the lack of articulation in the knees because it's going to limit the amount of poses that he can get into, but the improved articulation at the hip joint kind of makes up for that. The sculpt showing off all of his muscles and definition put together with the flesh tones that they used makes the Mutant Leader an awesome addition to the Dark Knight Returns collection. I hope you enjoyed this review, and if you did, leave comments, like this video, and subscribe, and don't forget to check out my Instagram and Facebook page. Thanks for watching.